Welcome, you're watching us here on Chartbusters. I'm Mangla Malu. With me today is Ekta Batra. We're not doing particularly bad for the market given the sort of uh, concerns that we had over the weekend. Uh, some soothing commentary coming in from the regulators that there has been a backstop to the SVB bank crisis, led the Nifty to move higher at uh, the open. But thereafter, we <coughs> had some bit of sell-off come by and the mid-cap index as well as the Nifty bank underperforming as a result of which we've given up most of these early gains. So let's see where we go from here. Hi, Ekta. Hi, Manglam. Yes, absolutely. We have the broader markets which are a bit sluggish at this point in time. So it's good to see that the Nifty and the Sensex are at least consolidating and there's no sort of sharp reaction to all of the headlines that have been making news globally. The mid-cap index currently down around a percent. We have the Bank Nifty which is just about flat at this point in time as well. We have a lot of ground to cover in terms of stocks as well as news which is lined up in the next 30 odd minutes. So let's get to our first management on the show. IRB Infra saw a 26% jump in toll collections in the month of Feb. It has also received, uh, recently received a letter of acceptance for an NHAI project in Gujarat, which is worth over 2,100 crores. We have uh, Tushar Kavedia, who is the chief financial officer at IRB Infra joining in to discuss all this and more. Uh, Mr. Kavedia, hi, thank you very much for taking the time out. Well, you know, I'll start with the toll data for the month of Feb. Like it is mentioned, it is up 26.7% on a year-on-year -year basis, but on a month-on-month -month basis, there's been a decline of around 6 odd percent. Can you take us to the details of uh, the toll data for the month of Feb and what the nuances were? Sure. So, uh, if you see on YOI basis, the growth is almost 27% for us on the toll collection. Yes. And uh, if we look on the month-on-month -month basis, the collections have improved for us. February month being a 28-days month, and if we compare on a monthly collection or a daily collection with January month, it is higher by 4%. So, there is no decline as such. Okay. The number of days are lesser in the month of Feb, and hence why henceforth and because of which it looks slightly lower but otherwise it's higher by four percent for us all right and uh, what's the outlook for uh, you know we're midway through march almost 13 days up how has that been and from april you have some rate hikes coming in as well what could the toll price hike be and what kind of traffic growth are you penciling in sure so if you see the uh, this quarter itself has a high commercial activities mm -hmm. going on and uh, that that is leading to the higher growth on the revenue collection as well we have seen a higher indirect tool, uh, indirect tax collection also. So this all proves that the higher commercial activities are, will be there in this quarter. And this month is also seeing a, a, a good growth in the tool collection as far as if we compare with the uh, on the last year basis. Mm -hmm. For the next year, uh, most of the projects, NHI projects have uh, the tariff, uh, tariff hike due. And uh, we expect around 5% of 5% uh, kind of tariff growth uh, for um, all the projects uh, under NHI. And in fact, the traffic, we assume around uh, 55 to 6%. So overall, on a CAGR basis, we believe uh, 10 to 11% of revenue growth is uh, quite comfortable to be assumed for the next year. Okay. Your Ganga Expressway project, uh, how much is it possibly expected to contribute on a quarterly basis? So as we discussed earlier also, the project has received the appointed date in the month of October and the progress is going quite well for us. Uh, the project is contributing the highest uh, construction revenue for us as of now. And uh, with uh, the timelines, what we have to construct the road within next two and a half to three years, uh, the quarterly contribution by this project will be somewhere around 500 to 600 crores on the construction front. Right. And uh, what about the opportunity coming in from the NHAI project that you've got uh, right now, what, 2300 crore worth project, which is um, you've uh, received the LOA, 2130 odd crores. By when does that come on stream? What's the revenue potential? Um, <coughs> what do you foresee from here? Yeah, so this project is a NHI BOT project in the state of Gujarat with approximately 91 kilometers of length. The uh, we are uh, we have already received the LOA hmm. and we are in the process of achieving the financial closure for the same, uh, which we believe could be achieved in the timelines given to us. Uh, post receiving the appointed date, which is approximately next uh, six months, we have to achieve. In the uh, post that, we will uh, commence the construction as well as the collection also on that particular project. And this uh, project will start uh, contributing to our construction revenue from this year itself. So, uh, what do you foresee in terms of construction revenue this year? Last time you joined us, you said, you know, 4,800 to 5,000 crores is what you're expecting from EPC in the next year. Um, 
how much will it was this baked in already or not uh, what's your revised outlook there if at all uh, so if you see uh, we have already uh, discussed about the order book which we had earlier before this project hmm. and with the basis of that order book uh, we were uh, expecting around uh, 4800 to 5000 crore for next year with this additional uh, project which we have backed the, the the revenue should be in the range of 5000 to 5500 crore for the next year Okay, so that was uh, in fact my next question. But nonetheless, let's talk about net debt then. That stood at around 1500 odd crores as per our last conversation. Uh, based on the number of orders that you're anticipating going into next fiscal as well as your toll collection estimates, what are you planning to do in terms of your balance sheet? So if you see our net debt to equity is quite comfortable for us. It is below one around 0.8 as of now. And as we don't have any plan to uh, raised debt at the parental level, the debt will be only at the project level. Today our uh, net debt stands at around 10,200 crores and uh, in, in next two years we will see a, lot, a repayment happening as per schedule in the projects and uh, basis that the net, uh, net debt to equity for us will further improve uh, once these repayments are being made in the projects going forward. All right, Tushar, finally, before we let you go, just give us a couple of numbers. Uh, what kind of order inflows are you expecting in the remainder of this fiscal? We have about 17 days to go for March as well. Outlook on order inflow for the next fiscal. And at the same time, how much will go out of your books and go into IRB in wit? Yeah, sure. So, so if you see the order book today, we stand at 9,700 crore in EPC and overall 20,800 uh, on the uh, totality basis, which includes the ONM order book as well. Uh, we expect another uh, because our target is to at least uh, have a order book increase by 20 percent whatever we have consumed for this year so around five to five thousand crore is the expected increase in order book for this fiscal out of which we have already achieved for around two thousand crores maybe in uh, the uh, available pipeline we can see at least two to three projects worth of four thousand to four thousand five hundred could be backed with the available opportunities uh, uh, coming uh, right now from the NHA side uh, for the next year outlook, we have already discussed about the uh, the construction revenue should be uh, in the range of 5,000 to 5,500 crore. And we are comfortable in achieving with the existing order book what we have today. Okay, all right. Quite an optimistic outlook, I would say. Thanks uh, very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's IRB Infra. The stock is down around one odd percent at this point in time. Well, for the markets, the Nifty is in the green, higher by around 26 odd points. We have the mid caps, which are still underperforming with the cut of around one odd percent.